everyone. Have a look at this. This is the vehicle they're going to be going in at the steering wheel. Jim Cairns, and in the uh, passenger seat, I'll call it, is Rex Baker. Now, this gives you an idea. I tried to get into uh, that car myself, and it was very difficult. Uh, but uh, Jim is paraplegic and fitter than me, fitter than I'll ever be. Um, everyone, put your hands together for these two gentlemen, Rex and Jim. We'll get them to come around. Now, for those of you that are observant, uh, you'll notice that they parked in an Akrod parking bay. And I'll get you to go over there, Rex, if you will, and, then, and get nice and close when I talk to you. Get nice and close to the mic when I talk to you. Uh, they're on an Akrod parking bay there, uh, which is part of the reason that we're here today as well. Make my day, don't take my bay, is a message that's being launched today. Make my day, don't take my bay. Uh, because we all see Akrod parking bays all around the place, in the city of course. There are a number of them at our shopping centres, we see them. And every now and then you see a car park there that shouldn't be there. And why don't we, uh, we'll, we'll meet Jim and Rex and we'll start off with Jim. Firstly, great to see you again mate. Thanks Russell. Jim Cairns is a very special human being and it's brilliant that you've been able to share this adventure uh, with us. Uh, the people that are sitting in that area there, I, I will tell you this now, so far, Rex is the only person that has driven that vehicle. That was the first time Jim drove it, and so you did very well. I didn't want to tell you beforehand, because I was scared you'd all flee. Uh, but how, how did it feel, mate? Oh, it was pretty good. I was a bit worried about the brakes working when I was coming up here, but they seemed to work okay. <laughs> What about uh, the make my day, don't take my bay? You're wearing the T-shirts. We've got the bumper stickers. If anyone wants one, I've got one for the Vespa. You'll be pleased to know. Um, and uh, it, it's about people paying respect, I suppose, to the, to the Akrod parking bays. How important is it that people, able-bodied people, don't park in, in those spots? Well, from, from my point of view, I mean, everyone has their own experiences, but my experience is... Uh, I need the Akrod Bay because I'm fairly independent and I get my wheelchair out the side of the car at the driver's door. So when I park in a bay, if I get the chair out and, and leave it, when you come back and someone snuck in beside you <laughs> and you can't get to your driver's door, I mean, on many occasions I've had to give complete strangers the keys to my car and say, excuse me, could you just reverse back so I can get into my car? And uh, I don't know how you explain that to the police if they were the wrong people you gave the keys to, put it that way. Wait, have you ever met someone that's parked in a bay that, that shouldn't be and had a chat to them? No, but I, 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 uh, I've had it the other way around where I've pulled into a bay and parked there and <laughs> someone's come up and knocked on the window and said, you're not disabled. <laughs> Maybe I don't look disabled, I don't know, <laughs> Russell. <laughs> but, yeah, no, look, I, I, hasn't, I haven't been affected much where I've seen people do it, but I know from my own personal experience, it's just been when I've come back to the car that is my main grudge you may yeah, say yeah okay well that's the message we're just trying to get people to not park in Akrod bays that's the key for us today Jim Cairns is uh, the, the gentleman that we're chatting to we've got Rex Baker with us as well and again we'll come to you in a sec Rex but I wonder because this is the story about Jim Cairns this is the yes. this next story is the one I think uh, that people need to hear uh, and I want to I want to go back those nearly 30 years now uh, to the 26th of August, 1985. And I, I want you to paint a picture. Where were you? What were you doing? What was that day about? Well, it was a pretty important day for me because my whole life changed quite drastically that day. But uh, I was racing a motorbike, racing in what they call the Wind Safari, which was the precursor to what we're going in next week, which is the Australasian Safari. And it was the third day of the event and I hadn't had much sleep in the previous days because the, uh, the event, as this one will be, is quite hard on the body and the vehicle. And my vehicle, or my motorbike in that race, had been knocked and sort of falling apart. So each night when you got in, you had to weld and repair frame fatigue and change tyres, sprockets, chains and things. Anyway, I hadn't had much sleep uh, and I uh, was overtaking a vehicle sort of midday on the third day and uh, unfortunately, uh, was that tired, I wasn't standing up on the motorbike, I was sitting on the seat and I hit something 
that normally you get away with. It was about a six inch ledge of sand and uh, and because my weight was in the wrong spot on the bike, I got thrown off. And uh, my first recollection of waking up was I knew it wasn't too good because my right leg was up beside my head because I'd shattered my femur. And uh, it's like an out of body experience. I was just laying there thinking, this is not good. No. But what is it that's attracted you to, to this fella in the first place, Rex? Well, we've been friends for a, a long time, about 1981, first met Jim. We were mechanics together at the Caterpillar dealership and uh, we did a bit of bike riding and whatnot together. And then, of course, after his accident, I, uh, I had an understanding of what he went through and what he does go through every day because my mother was uh, in a wheelchair and uh, I had a lot to do with looking after her and I know how hard it is just day to day, simple things, how hard they are and uh, Jim just, he doesn't complain, he handles life really well, he's a bit of an inspiration and uh, he's a good fella. So. And, and that's, uh, that gives us an insight into you I, I think, um, what about when he's driving and you're you're navigating. What's it like? What, you know, what's he like as a driver? Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, sometimes he misses the rocks, but it's not very often. Uh, I have a problem with tyres. Rex has a problem with our roof. Yeah. He tends to roll it over. I just pop tyres. I've I've rolled two. Uh, Jim's rolled one. Tyres. Jim's about twenty six. I'm about one. So I think he, so we're pretty uh, even, really. I think he's uh, well and truly in front of the tyre department. <laughs> um, what about, what's he like to, you know, when you're going away on this sort of trip? You, you, it's going to be a tough, a tough couple of weeks, isn't it? What, yeah. What's he like to have oh. as a companion, considering that he does drive and he's a little bit mad and all that? Yeah, no, he's very intense. He's very focused on winning. He's always got to, be, he's always got to win. Uh, he doesn't like to slow down at all. I don't know why we've even got a braking system fitted to the buggy. Uh, he's definitely a, a person that likes to go at least 90%. Uh, what about the logistics of this trip then? Tell yeah. us about that and in fact the route that you'll be taking. Yeah, well we've got some very good friends, um, a couple of which are in the audience today that have been great, great mates as well as great support. They're uh, coming along on the venture with us. Uh, we've got a support vehicle. Uh, we've had some um, accommodation sorted out. Uh, just just organising what you've got to take with you. It's all the spare tyres, clutches, belts, all the different things that you need. And there'll be something that we've missed. But these guys have uh, been really great support. They've helped us with the buggy, um, with bits and pieces and, uh, and money as well. Uh, there was a great show on, I'm sure it was on the ABC actually, The Bush Mechanics. Yeah. You know where they would have to fashion sort sure. of replacement parts from from other things. Is is that something that you have to do? Probably we won't be able to do that on this trip. We'll have the spare bits with us that will uh, we will be fitting directly uh, to it's the buggy. There'll be no spurious parts. I don't think it's a bit of a bugger because uh, <laughs> I've got to sit in the vehicle because I can't take the wheelchair with me. Yeah. So what yeah. what Rex has done is he's made a magazine rack in the car. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll be able to either yeah. read the paper or do a Sudoku or yeah. something like that while Rex is out yeah. there doing his bush no, mechanics. He's quite considerate like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a credit to the two of you that you're taking this on, but I can't think of two better people that would be set up for something like this. I, I wonder, Rex, uh, in fact, just before I send you over to the car to point to a couple of things, um, Bevan mentioned your wife Caroline who's going on the trip. Yeah, my lovely darling little flower over there in the audience. Oh gee, sucked up to you big time. <laughs> I don't know what he did last night, but he shouldn't have done it obviously. Um, and knowing him, it was probably he was at the, at, at the, working on that until 3 o'clock in the morning or something. And uh, your son Luke is also Luke, yep, going to be yep. documenting it. So, yep, yep. And, and they're your family, you're saying that you, you, you cared for your mother and, and, and so family's very important to you is what yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, unfortunately, my mother's no longer with us, but uh, yeah, she uh, got to see our kids uh, sort of come into the world, which we never ever thought would happen because she had multiple sclerosis, which is a terrible disease. But uh, she hung on and saw them get to about three or four years old, luckily. But uh, I mean, they're 27 now. <laughs> well, but, yeah, we, we looked after for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. I don't know it was a while ago, but uh, mm. you'll be thinking of her, I'm sure. Sure. And she would be very proud of you, mate. Very, yeah, very proud of you. Um, uh, put your hands together if you can for Rex Baker, who I'll send over to the car. 
uh, if you go over and I'll get, uh, I'll get you, Jim, to talk about some of the things. Let's start with the driver's side of the vehicle. What are some of the alterations that have been made to, to this car? Well, there's sort of, um, there's two different aspects of the whole car. One is making it capable for me to drive, but the other one is to meet the standards and requirements of the, of the safari from a safety perspective. But for me to drive, Rexy's got the steering wheel there. It does hook onto the steering shaft through a, through a quick connect, but the, uh, the bit in the centre there is, is the throttle. That silver ring in the middle there. That yeah. silver ring, yeah, and it needs to be adjusted actually because at the moment it's like a go, no go button, but it can be computer set up to be wherever you want it in a linear sort of throttling. Incredible. And that, that needs to be done yet because it's quite hard to drive for me. But So uh, that's the throttle and just inside there's a lever there that just pushes straight down on the brake pedal. So uh, the actual foot accelerator and the foot brake pedal are in there for Rex if he can reach him with his short legs. But, um, but uh, yeah, so it's the same for Rex, but I've just got the, 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 the thumb throttle and the, and the and hand, hand brake. Yeah. And so there's a switch in there that, you know, that is a Rex gym switch, That's basically. right. That, that's, when, we, when we stop at a gate, well, that, that, that switches between the foot pedal and the, and the right. steering wheel thing. But uh, uh, when we get to a gate, because there's some gates in the event that you have to open and close. Obviously, the, we're going through pastoral country up there. So uh, Rex, whether he's passenger or driver, is obviously going to have to get out and open and close the gates. So we've worked out that I can switch in between the two. So I can sit in the passenger seat when Rex jumps out and I can drive through the gate, switch back to him and then he can... He can uh, lean over going. to the left-hand side just, and do... Just yeah. lean over, yeah. yeah. But Rex doesn't know it yet, but he, you say that I'm a crazy driver, he... I was going to say he's worse than me, but I'm good. He's a <laughs> yeah. bad driver. So I've actually had that modified. That switch also takes 50 horsepower off him. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a self-preservation thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard two versions of that story. Uh, now I don't know which one's true, but it's exactly the same. You just change the names. <laughs> what is it that you've had to put in there for the well, safari? Well, where Rex is knocking it there, the, the, the original roll cage, which they come with a roll cage, doesn't meet Australian standards, so we've had to throw that out and put a whole new roll cage on. It's got the roof. But also, we have to be able to do over 250 kilometres on a tank full of juice. So the normal yeah. little fuel tank had to be thrown out. And there's a little, well, little, there's an enormous tank that goes underneath both seats, holds 86 litres. So uh, we hope that doesn't leak, or we hope, hope we don't have any problems with that. Uh, how fast does it go, Jim? Well, it doesn't go that fast in a, in a straight line speed. It'll do 120, 130, which, which is not fast when you're trying to go down a fence line out in the, out in the, when you're racing. But certainly they come into their own, this vehicle, when you're in the tight sections. Uh, they'll, they'll blitz nearly all the other vehicles and cars. They're just so quick and nimble in and out of tight sections. It's uh, fantastic. And what about wet terrain? How are they if, you, if uh, there's any rains coming down from the north and you've got some water to cross? They're, they're, look, they're not too bad, but I just wired... I've spent, one of the jobs I've had to do is a lot of wiring in there with safety, and I've been doing that, so I, uh, I hope it doesn't rain because I'm not too sure how waterproof <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, it's not funny. Um, <laughs> and what about, uh, uh, you're an ambassador for Count Me In. Yep. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, well Count Me In is, is, is basically you know, trying to create welcoming communities for people with disabilities. And uh, uh, I think, I think that, that the simple way of looking at it is, is everyone belongs and everyone's included. And you know, I look at my situation, you know, I've obviously got my disability, we've all got different disabilities. I think I think 20% of the uh, Australian population has some level of disability, but uh, we still have our. We want to be included. <laughs> I mentioned that Jim Cairns, everyone, okay, is you. an ambassador for Count Me In. So is the Mayor of Perth, the Lord Mayor of Perth. Would you please put your hands together for the wonderful Lisa Scafidi, everyone? Uh, what about Count Me In? You're, you're an ambassador for Count Me In. I'm a what proud does it mean Count Me In ambassador? For you? Yeah. Look, I think it means so much. We've had a conversation just last week in the office in terms of accessibility for people who aren't, you know, on two legs, getting around the city, how we all do and take it for granted. It is a case of being very conscious of different levels, alternatives to stairs, and having elevator and uh, alternate access points for those in need. So it's something we're very aware 
aware of, particularly as the city not only grows, but diversifies so much and we have upper layers, lower layers and all of that. I was at a meeting the other day for the details going into the link and you'll see I called it the Sarah Lee approach, layer upon layer upon layer in terms of all of the layers that are being incorporated into our new designs to make them so interesting but at the same time you need to maintain that accessibility for everybody. One of the things I know that you've been talking about recently is like it's one thing to have more acrod bays but uh, oh, yeah. they need to be policed I guess. We need people that are you know, responsible, charged with the responsibility of seeing that they're being used correctly. What, what can you do about that? Well, look, it's an interesting thing. When the media question came to us and we had to go through our records and see how many infringements had been issued in the city of Perth, which is eight square kilometres, there were 400. And I have to say, I'm like, really? How would your integrity let you park in an ACROD bay if you don't have an ACROD sticker and a legitimate need to be parking there? I, I can't understand that people try that on. So it's very disappointing. But I suppose there are those people who are in a hurry or whatever it is and they justified in their own crazy mind that they can get away with it. Well, occasionally they do, but they need to also be reflecting on the fact that they might have put someone out of uh, sync who really needed it and couldn't park there at that time. So it's selfishness, whichever way you cut it. So I think it's sad that we have to police to that level, but it is, I suppose, the world in which we live in today, so it's a sad thing. But I mean, okay, we see you've got a physical disability, you're in a wheelchair, so it's pretty obvious to the average person that, you know, you're not able to walk. But there's a lot of people walking around that have invisible disabilities and I think we just all need to be a lot more considerate of everybody. You know, we're not all the same and I think we're so fast in society today, everyone's in a hurry going about their business, we do have to slow down and just consider other people and just be a little bit more focused on not being so hurried and harried. Make my day, don't take my bay is the message, which is a fantastic yeah. message for people. Make my day, don't take my bay. Put your hands together for Lisa Scafidi. Jeez, yours looks better than mine. Hey, I thought Jim Cairns looked hot in his T-shirt.